at 1-800-DIAL-DJs. That's 1-800-342-5357, where one call does it all. Now, Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of teenagers whose only apparent talent is spray-painting the fence when my back is turned. Right here in the new new media capital of the world and home of the second-best team in baseball, St. Petersburg, Florida. Now, no greater authority than Marvel Comics' own Stan Lee asks that you not read Barbara Slate's new book, You Can Do a Graphic Novel. It's right there on the cover. Stan the Man says, I shudder at the thought of having to compete with a whole new gaggle of graphic novel creators. I tremble because if anyone can bring out this, the writer and artist hidden within society's somnambulant psyche, and if you know Stan, that's him, <laughs> it's the titanically talented Barbara Slate. So please don't read this book. I have a family to support. Now, I hate to counter the express wishes of the man who put the Excel in Excelsior, but if you've ever thought about dabbling in the world of graphic novels and need a little help getting started, Barbara Slate may be the right hot poker for you. Slate is a veteran of comic, book and, comic books and illustration. Having started her career with a line of Ms. Liz greeting cards and cosmopolitan cartoons, before graduating to comic books. She's worked for DC and Marvel, having illustrated everything from Barbie for Marvel, Beauty and the Beast for Disney, and Betty Veronica for the Archie Comics line. She's also the author of the Yuppies from Hell series of graphic novels. And speaking of from hell, she's a fellow parent of a teenage daughter. Poor woman. Barbara Slate, welcome to Mr. Media. Well, I... I have nothing to say now. What a great introduction. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, if, if you like that, maybe I should try writing a graphic novel. <laughs> you can write a graphic novel. Absolutely. Yeah. And I got to ask you, Barbara, I mean, do you really think anyone can do a graphic novel? I I do, actually. I uh, People are stuck on the drawing part of it. They think that they can't draw, but the truth is, Everybody can draw. It was probably if you go back to your childhood and think of the moment when you were, you had that um, red crayon and scribbling on the wall or scribbling somewhere, and you were having so much fun. Either your parents stopped you, or maybe even an art teacher stopped you when you were older. But somebody said you couldn't draw, and I think everybody can draw. You can do stick figures. It really doesn't matter. The um, the graphic novel, the Wimpy Kid. The Diary of a Wimpy Kid is all done in stick figures, and that's the number one selling graphic novel today. I'm 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 proving you wrong. Uh, you can't <laughs> see the video right now. I am actually drawing and showing uh, our our audience uh, who are watching on TV uh, some of my uh, some of my sketches just to prove that no, not everyone can do the art. Um, well, that's not fair. <laughs> I can't see it. I can't critique it. <laughs> well, but I mean, uh, I'll bet it's good. That, to say that, well, no, I tr- trust me, and and I think Rudy's in the studio. Uh, he can he can vouch for the fact that it's pretty awful. Well, the um, thing is, with graphic novels, you can draw, and whatever you're drawing is fine. But the the art moves the story forward. So so writing and drawing, and then okay, let's say you can't draw. Let's say you're the one person in the world that really can't draw. Then what you can do is you can find a partner who can write and you can, oh, no, actually you do the writing and you can find a partner who can do the art. So there you go. Hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm holding up my partner. It's, uh, it's Robin. <laughs> um, you know, do, do, I, actually, all kidding aside, but I mean, don't you think to say that anyone can do this, it almost cheapens the field a little bit? I know that's not your goal, but isn't that kind of a, you know? Well, it depends. I mean, if you are, if you want to do graphic novels and really make a career out of it, well, then you really have to practice and you have to really be good at it. But if you want to do a diary of your day or um, if you want to do a, um, a story about your family, you can certainly do it in graphic novel form, and you don't have to be the greatest writer or the greatest artist. artist. But mm. if you enjoy doing it, then of course anybody can do it. It, it would seem – it seems like the, the element that most of the would-be graphic novelists probably get wrong 
might be the story elements that you can always get someone else to do the art but if you don't understand how to tell a story in in some fashion i mean i know in the book you talk about how books you know the stories have to have a beginning a middle um uh, and and twist i am a so twist, you right. actually did read the book thank you yes, yes. every story a good story needs a beginning, middle, end, and twist because nobody wants a boring story. And everybody, if you don't have a story that, with a um, something that is a surprise, the twist is the surprise and the thing that makes it interesting. So mm-hmm. without that, you have a boring story. You mm-hmm. don't want a linear story. Well, and, and, and in comics, comics, graphic novels, I use, I'll use the terms interchangeably, uh, you, 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 just like in, 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 in other types of uh, literature and storytelling, it doesn't have to necessarily be in order. Uh, one, of the, one of the most interesting books I've ever read I, was uh, earlier this year. It was a book by uh, Richard uh, – I want to say it's Deutsch. Uh, it's called The Thirteenth Hour, and it, it, it's, it's told backwards. It starts with the thirteenth hour, then the twelfth, then the eleventh, then the tenth, the ninth. And, oh, really? Yeah, and graphic novels uh, and comics – have the, have a more even more of a freedom to tell things out of uh, out of order uh, in, in in change the uh, the narrator change the voice uh, but if you don't have a story of some sort it's just not going to work right and you, you can go from you you can jump around in a graphic novel you. You, you can go the day after. You can go. You can go flashbacks. It's really like it's really like a movie, and mm. you are the camera. You're the one that's telling the story, and the camera goes in and out. And when you design a page graphically, the the artwork has to really pop off the page, and that you do that by changing the perspective, and that's really where the ca- where your eyes are the camera. Mm. As I'm looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> um what uh what is you know is, is the story the hardest part about getting started or is it something else or is it just you know getting off your butt and actually you know starting to tell the story well i i've done a oh i've written about probably 300 or 400 comic books i i've lost count now and um i Actually, I'm so passionate about it. I feel so happy to be telling a story. And I did a lot of Betty and Veronica. I, I wrote a lot about those two girls. And mostly I kept them as girlfriends rather than them chasing that, than chasing Archie. And um, You were going to say that demented boy with the truck. <laughs> I, I like Archie. He's very sweet. But I, I don't like to... Um, uh, to push the idea of two girls who are best friends fighting over a boy. Actually, I don't think that's possible if you're best friends and you have the same boyfriend. But who knows? I mean, it's been going on for almost 70 years, so I guess everybody likes it. It's always popular... been a fantasy of mine. It, it is a fantasy of yours. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, you know, the, the stories are you, – you can tell – like my editor – of Archie, every time I call him and and tell him a story, he goes, "Barbara, it's been done." I said, "Well, all these stories have been done. It's just the way you tell them. You tell the same story, but you give it a little bit of a, you give it your own flavor. You give it a little bit of a twist, and it's a new story. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if if I've written a, I've done a lot of Barbie and Beauty and the Beast, and it's it's really telling this a story, and you just give it a little twist, and it's your own." But I love telling stories. I dream about the stories. I think about them all day long. And to me, it's the best job in the world. Now, you mentioned Barbie. And I, I'm, I'm getting off the topic of your book for a second. But I have to ask you. Uh, you, you did Barbie comics for, for Marvel at a, at a time before uh, the Toy Story movies, I think, before they, you know, they, 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 they made you so actually I look so young, believe- too, don't I? Isn't it amazing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's laughing. I'm, I, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm laughing from nervousness because there's no good response to that question. I can't Smart win man. no matter what I say. Um, but no, I was going to say you did that at a time when, um, uh, you know, Barbie was just plastic. I mean, there were no there were no cartoons about Barbie at the time. I think uh, Toy Story hadn't come about and given, made right. Barbie seem 3D. 
Um, was that a tough character to illustrate and, and, and you know, make life lifelike? I mean, because Barbie had only, up until that point, really existed in the minds of the little girls who played with the dolls. Well, what happened was I had done a um, character called Angel Love mm-hmm. for DC Comics, and that was drug, sex, and rock and roll, and it was very edgy. And before that, I did Ms. Liz, which was also very edgy. It was the woman who speaks her mind, a feminist character. So um, after nine issues, DC Comics took Angel of off the racks because it was um, – I guess it was too drug, sex, and rock and roll. So, <laughs> uh, um, so I was kind of out of work for a while and, um, and desperate to be doing comic books. And um, – I, I started um, having lunch with Tom DeFalco, who was um, editor in chief of Marvel Comics, trying to push the girls' line, and you know, and he'd be saying that's he'd say, well, when we get something or when we think of something, we'll let you know. And sure enough, Barbie came up, and he said, you know, how do you feel about doing Barbie? And my friends really gave me a rough time. They said, how could you go from um, Angel Love and Ms. Liz to Barbie? But the truth of the matter is that Barbie was a – and at, at, in the comic book was a liberated woman. She worked every month. She had a new incredible job. She could have – she was a doctor. She was uh, – she went to the moon. She was a, um, a teacher. She really was a and, – and, and also she was illustrated in a way where her body was not so ridiculous. I mean, you know, mm. actually she was – more of a, um, a a comic book character than um, uh, more um, th- women related to her more than th- certainly the characters that a lot of the superhero men drew. So she, I, I don't know, I, I don't know how to describe this except saying that she, her breasts were reduced. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and um, and and she um, she uh, we had a wonderful editor, Hildy Mesnick. Who took such care of her, and and the only and she had um, the only thing about her is that she wasn't allowed to make mistakes. Although after about thirty issues, I did have her make one mistake where she put the wrong Valentines into the different. Uh, she was sending one to Ken and one to somebody else, and she put them in the wrong envelope. That was that could be Barbie's only mistake. But I thought you were going to say that she forgot to take her birth control pill. <laughs> No, she. You well. I, we're not allowed to talk about that. You told me. So, <laughs> anyways, but um, I love doing Barbie, and I felt like she really did a very. Uh, she really represented little girls in a really positive way, and um, I did about. Um, I wrote about sixty-five Barbie comics, and mm. every month it was just like a fantasy. She, she was, uh, you know, anything that I wanted her to be, she could be, and I loved it. So wow. she was kind of like a liberated woman. The only problem was that we had a – she was going out with this guy, Ken. It's kind of like I wanted him to be a little bit more uh, of a character than just somebody who comes and hands her flowers. So I spent a little time on Ken where he would be traveling and call Barbie and talk about his ventures, adventures. So uh, Ken was a little upgraded. I see. All right. Well, <laughs> enough about Barbie. <laughs> I th- yeah, it's enough had about enough. Barbie. I'll tell you what. Let's take a quick break. Um, this is Bob Andelman, and you're listening to the Mr. Media Radio interview uh, with comic book artist Barbara Slate, who's the author of the new book, You Can Do a Graphic Novel. Now, that's Ken, like C-A-N, not Ken, <laughs> K-E-N, Barbie's friend. Uh, and <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey, did you know that you can listen to the latest Mr. Media on your phone with the Stitcher app? Stitcher is smart radio for your smartphone. Mr. Media is on demand and on the go with Stitcher. Download Stitcher for your phone today. Get the free download at Stitcher.com. That's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R.com. First, there was the lost generation. Then came the greatest generation. Followed by the silent generation. The me generation. And Generation X. 
Now comes the overscheduled, overprotected, hyperparented generation. <laughs> Three out of four of whom are riding in car seats that aren't being used correctly. The latch system is in most cars and makes it easier to be sure your child's car seat is installed correctly. Just clip it to the anchors, attach the top tether, and pull the straps tight. To find out more, visit safercar.gov. Anchor, tether, latch. It's the next generation of child safety for the next generation. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Ah, you're finally back. What took so long? Honey, you know how many shades of white paint they carry? 34. So what'd you get? Ultra premium puffy cloud white. <laughs> and that's going to match the dining room? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> hey, it's white. Look, there's another can in the car. I just want to sit down a sec. Honey? Are you all right? Uh, Tom? It can happen anytime, any place, without warning. Fact is, two out of three people with diabetes die of a heart attack or stroke, and many don't even know they're at risk. The good news is, if you or someone you love has diabetes, you can lower the risk, but it's up to you to ask your health care provider how. For more information, go to DiabetesActNow.org. That's DiabetesActNow.org. Brought to you by the American Diabetes Association and the Ad Council. What's all the buzz on chataboutit.com? Pop culture to politics on The Unfiltered Show. It was the Tiger Woods press conference. Everybody was scrambling to get themselves in front of the television. It <laughs> probably had um, more um, production elements that right. went into this than an off-Broadway play. I'm surprised literally. the credits didn't roll at the end. Exactly. <laughs> I am so sorry. I know that you're sorry. Yes, we uh, know. <laughs> we, we got that. The Unfiltered Show, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8 p.m. at chataboutit.com. Bob Andelman, and you're listening to the Mr. Media Radio interview with comic book artist Barbara Slate, who's the author of the new book, You Can Do a Graphic Novel. And before we return to Barbara, I have a book on a related topic to give away. If you're watching on video, check this out right here. Okay, let's see. Get it up there. Um, Founders of Comic Fandom is Bill Shelley's 16th book overall and his 10th book of history on comics fandom. It's uh, available now on Amazon.com, but it can be yours free by telling the world you listen to MrMedia.com, MRMedia.com on your Twitter page. Do that, and I will announce the winner on next week's show. Now, Barbara, uh, in this portion of the show, I hope we could talk a little more about women in comics. Is that okay with you? No. I'm kidding. All right. Let's talk about our daughters then. Uh. Let's talk about women in comics because there are a lot now. uh, When when I started in the 80s, there were just actually two of us who were writing and drawing comics. There were were, uh, uh, cartoonists who were doing it for the underground comics, but um, Trina Robbins and I were really the two who were – writing and drawing for DC and Marvel. So if anything came up for girls, it was either Trina or me who would get the job. Well, and and I wanted to ask you, the timing of our conversation is good in in a sense because two female artists actually made news this week. Uh, Kathy uh, Geiswhite announced that she was retiring her long-running strip. Is that right? Yeah, just yesterday. Wow. Wow. Barbara, buy a newspaper. Come on now. And, uh, <laughs> I live up here in the sticks. <laughs> I mean, they call me Mr. Media, but I, 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 I can't keep everybody up to date. <laughs> and, and what's the other thing? And uh, the other thing, I'm going to hold this up to the camera too. Uh, Newsweek uh, profiled uh, 85-year-old former comic book artist Lily Renee Phillips, who it was revealed was a successful but little-known illustrator of comics in the 1940s. And, you know, I was thinking about this, and you're right. I mean, there are probably more women working in comics now. But, I mean, the sad truth is that relative to the, it being a very male-dominated uh, industry, there still aren't that many. Why, why do you think that is? Well, actually, since, the, uh, in, uh, since manga came to um, America, that has changed everything, the Japanese influence. And now there are so many... There, are, there actually are a lot of women in comics. Um, I don't. Um, I, yeah, I'm happy about that, but uh, certainly when I started, it was totally dominated by men. Um, mm. 
I think it's a wide open field now. Everybody has a story. I think everybody can, well, as I said, anybody can do, I think everybody should do comics and, you know, and write their story. Um, but I don't, um, I, I don't think I don't really see a big difference now. In fact, uh, there was a uh, panel recently, and I like to talk about the the good old days when there were just a couple of women, because it gives it a history. But um, I got shot down because the women today don't want to hear a difference between the men and the women. They just you know that was then and now is now, and they feel it's equal. And don't go back yeah. there. They tell me so. Do I sound bitter? Uh, no, no, <laughs> but I mean it would be tough. I know, you know, if I, I, I look back uh, at Marvel, the, the two names that always came up, there was, there was uh, Flo, uh, who always, uh, I guess, what did she do, the letter pages or something? And Marie Severin was always around. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm thinking there was one other name. Uh, obviously, there, you were there, but there was one other person at Marvel, very little at DC, although the publisher of DC was a woman. Jeanette um, Kahn, yes. Yeah. And uh, Jeanette actually was the the person who the woman who gave me my first um job doing yeah. angel love so i am deeply indebted to her she actually took a um a, a real chance with me so um uh, yeah she she was a, she was a terrific uh, person i i think she's in hollywood now doing movies hmm. well and uh, you mentioned uh, manga um and uh, yeah i mean we hear a lot about how Young girls have become a huge audience, for, and and for people don't know it's, it's sort of Japanese comics. It's a very distinctive style. It's uh, very angular, and yeah. it's a big difference between American comics. All the American comics were round, and they had uh, you know big eyes. Um, well, manga has big eyes too, but uh, now everything with the um, manga it's very angular and very sharp, and it, of course it goes from. Um, Left to right, or is it right to left? Right to left. <laughs> yeah. And do you do you think that's going to lead to even more uh, young women uh, taking a shot at the field? Absolutely. I see with my daughter and her and her friends. They draw manga. It, mm-hmm. I don't. For me personally, I'm not a huge fan of manga. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like the the Archie style. I like the Barbie style. I like the roundness and I like the softness. I'm not crazy about the manga. And and also, I find it hard to read. And it's not just because of the direction. It's because I don't like the, I don't like the arrows. I, you know, I like, I like a real smoothness of a page. I like the page to really have a, a nice flow to it. And I don't find that flow in uh, manga so much. Hmm. Well, and, and let me ask you this. Uh, we're both very fond of Trina Robbins, who you mentioned earlier, and yes. who's been on this show twice. Um, who else would you recommend as role models to young women interested in the industry? Besides me and Trina? Yeah. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, and we're out of here, folks. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Let's see. Well, uh, Mary Wilshire is a, a wonderful artist. And um, uh, Linda Barry, uh, I, I love her work. Of course. And... Um, let me think who else. Um, of course, the uh, Persep- Persepolis is uh, wonderful. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not even going to pretend that I know how to pronounce her name. Right. And I know you're um, do you know? Artist, is she Iranian or Iraqi? I can't remember now. I think it's Iraq. Iraq, okay. I, no, Iran. Iranian. Ar- I Iran. Yeah, that's what I thought. And uh, last question because we're just about out of time. Oh, okay. What, what, what men in the business have been good mentors to women in comics? Well, I think that um, I think Tom DeFalco actually. Um, he was uh, uh, editor in chief of Marvel for a long time, and he was the one that started the girls' line there. Uh, he started Barbie and Beauty and the Beast, and I think that he's he really doesn't get the credit he deserves. Okay. So I would say he he really made a big difference. Um, let me just think. Oh, and of course Stan Goldberg is a, a wonderful artist. He's an Archie artist, and Dan DiCarlo. I think that they are fantastic. Art. Well, Dan DiCarlo is no longer with us, but uh, Stan yeah. Goldberg has a beautiful art style, and okay. he's a big influence on girls. Well, and um, um, I guess that's about it. 
All right. Well, Barbara, I'm going to interrupt you there because uh, I want to tell everybody where they can find your book. Oh, good. Uh, and, and that would be uh, you can do a no- you you can do a graphic novel. It's in great bookstores everywhere, where you can order it online right now at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. And for more about Barbara and her work, check out her website, which is Barbara Slate. Dot com. That's barbaraslate.com. And Barbara, uh, I just want to thank you so much for joining us Mr. Media today. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, Mr. Media. My pleasure. Take care and go okay, out and buy her bye. book. And folks, for more original interviews with your favorite celebrities, you can surf over to our main site. That's mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. And you can now hear Mr. Media while you're on the go with Stitcher Radio. Stitcher is a free news and talk mobile application. The latest episode of Mr. Media is always available for you there. No syncing needed and no memory wasted. It's available for your iPhone, your Palm Pre, Android phones, or your BlackBerry. Downloading is easy. Just go to Stitcher.com and check out the App Store for your individual mobile phone. While you're there, check out some of my favorite online radio shows. That includes The Michael Mara Show, Doug Loves Movies, The Business with Kim Masters, and Sex with Emily. Subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. You really should try that sometimes. I I find that it works just great for me, sometimes better than anything else. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at mrmedia.com and find me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you sharing a piece of your day with Mr. Media. Thanks for listening, everybody. This is Chat About It, the future of Internet radio. Don't just listen to Internet radio shows on business, sports, or politics. Chat about it. Eight. I deliver your Sunday paper every week. Seven. I'm the intern. We work on the same floor. One in eight Americans is struggling with hunger. Six. Our kids walk to school together every day. Including millions of children and seniors. Five. We chat in the elevator at work sometimes. We all know people who aren't 